Okay, so here's the deal. I am a huge fan of the Rosa Gallery watercolors. Huge. I own a few sets and now I own a couple more after the fire sale that Amazon had a couple of weeks ago. I couldn't resist but to purchase this uh, set of Rosa Studio watercolors. I've always been curious about them and this set was on sale for $10. I think normally it's like $15.17 and for that price for 24 full pans I could not resist. I had this set for a few weeks now and I absolutely love it and I want to totally do a comparison uh, video for you and we're going to talk about the differences between Rosa Studio and Rosa Gallery. So if that's something that you're into, stay tuned and settle in because this one's going to be a long one and we'll get started straight away. Okay, so I thought that the best way to do this would be to do a side-by-side -side, uh, comparison study of uh, the Rosa Gallery Botanical set against the Rosa Studio set. This is 24 full pans. This is 28 full pans of professional colors. And these sets, um, both of them have many of the same colors in them. I also thought the best way to do this would be to do a Kandinsky color study. Um, by that, I mean uh, the circles in the squares. If you're not familiar with that, um, it's a very famous uh, painting, but it wasn't really a painting. It was just a small color study. And these color studies are great uh, for lots of reasons. And uh, so I thought we'd do one together today. All right, I'm gonna start by um, wetting ooh, the top right corner of my paper. And I really wanted to test out these watercolors on 100% cotton watercolor paper. This is my Baohong sketchbook. It's 100% cotton paper and uh, I, I'm really enjoying it. So I wanted to uh, do this study on what on cotton paper because I wanted to give each of the paints the best chance they had to perform. So I thought that would be fair to use use the paints on on professional paper. So now that I've got those squares wet, comes to the hard part to decide, you know, what kind of color study I want to do and how I want to match these up. I do want to clean that that yellow out real quick. All right. Clean my brush out. And I suppose I'll start with that yellow then. And so this would be lemon yellow and this is PY3 in the student set and it flows really well. That's very pretty actually. Right off the bat, I could tell that the binder is different than the binder in um, in the professional grade. So generally speaking, uh, your student grade watercolors are going to have less pigment to binder ratio than your professional grade. And you can see there's definitely a lot more pigment in the professional one than in the student one. Yet the student one flows a lot better. So this is cadmium yellow and this is just lemon. This is PY3. I don't know what, I, I'm sorry, I don't have the pigment information, but I should have grabbed that, but I didn't. So, um, so there's that. And I think on the outset, um, you know, perhaps a, a good one to let's just do, let's just do a red. Let's just do a red to start or maybe a blue. Um, perhaps ultramarine would be a good one to start. Um, that's, that's your standard. So we'll go ultramarine on the outside here. Um, there's, see, it really rewets easily and very pigmented, what you'd expect. I absolutely love these watercolors. Um, I'm such a fan of the Rosa watercolors and was so curious about um, the student set. I'm, um, yeah, I don't know why I just was. So we'll go over to the ultramarine on this side. And so you can see the difference, like, hopefully you can see the difference. So this is really clear and this looks more milky almost. You see there's like a different binder. The binder in the student grade, um, 
in the Rosa Studio reminds me a lot of the binder in the Gonzai Tombi paints, the Kiritaki Gonzai Tombi paints, that kind of like, I don't know, gooey binder, <laughs> um, if you know what I'm referring to. Um, and you see it's not as like uh, clean and clear, transparent. It looks a little, little milky, almost like a, a cobalt blue sometimes looks to me. But pretty nonetheless. I mean, I, I don't see that big of a difference. I will tell you that the binder, like I said, was the first thing that I noticed about these paints. And um, <clears throat> the back of the packaging says that there's a unique binder that's a combination of synthetics and gum arabic that allows you to keep the purity of color and excellent watercolors applying. So clearly something was lost in translation there. I don't know, but something was lost in translation. Um, so um, I want to do, uh, let's do matter. Matter seems comparable, um, but there's, there's a different binder. So uh, we'll go for a matter here and see what happens there. So the Kandinsky uh, color studies, I really enjoy doing them because I learn a lot, not just about color, but about how the colors interact together, about paper, um, yeah, about dry time, you know, things like that. Um, it's interesting. Okay. So I like to do uh, color studies a lot and they're pretty and um, often when they're done, I'll use other media on top of it. And, um, I believe George Kandinsky did the same thing. I, I believe his, his, uh, color study is, is watercolor with some mixed media. Okay. I'm actually liking the way that's blending and mixing more than this side. So this is this is matter red, and this would be matter matter, <laughs> just straight matter. And this is this is really why I I wanted to check this out and why I was curious about this because I knew there were going to kind of be variations and colors that I didn't have from the from the professional set. And for me, it was like, well, many of them are light fast. Like when I was looking at the back of the packaging. So many of them are light fast and I don't put a whole lot of stock into something being light fast anyhow, but you know, I was like, well, you know, if there's a difference, you know, I want as many Rosa watercolors as I can get, but cause that's just me. I'm just a Rosa fanatic like that. So we'll go on to the next one and it'll be really interesting to see once these dry down, how, how they compare side by side. Um, now I'm going to uh, wet these lower right squares. Um, lots of times when I do these, I do these just to relax and I, I don't put a whole lot of thought into it. Today I am putting some thought into what my color combinations are just because I want to provide a good comparison, right? Um, but generally when I do a Kandinsky study, I'm not putting too much thought into it all. Uh, at all. So one thing I wanted to compare is the yellow ochres. So the, um, the yellow ochre in the Rosa Studio is straight PY42, which is typical for a yellow ochre. I'm finding that the Studio flow a lot more than the gallery, by the way. I don't know what you see. Look at that. We'll, we'll see over here. So I need to clean that out. <clears throat> so the yellow ochre from the professional set from the Rosa Gallery is a blend of PY42 um, and PY43. wonder if it's going to move as much. And the yellow ochre in the, the gallery seems to be a little bit more intense and a little bit more transparent as well. Uh, this seems to have more yellow in it. it. It's definitely more yellow and this is more of um, an amber color. 
So certainly a subtle difference there that I can tell right away. And perhaps on the outside, we'll do a comparison of the greens. So um, this is PG8. I really like um, their PG8. I use it a lot. Um, it's like this really just an intense dark green that's just a nice starting point for mixes. So yeah, I enjoy this color. And I'm enjoying what the colors are doing on my paper. That's really different. <laughs> I That didn't yeah, and see, doing these side-by-sides, like, you can see so much, you can learn so much. Um, yeah, see how things layer, how your paper dries. Um, all right, so then this would be uh, green over here. Oh, yeah, definitely a lot more pigmented. You can see that right away. Barely touched it. Um So they're just different, right? I, I I don't know. To me, they're different. And I have been enjoying the paints separately, not trying to compare them and saying, oh, they're not as good as, or these are better. You know, I've just been trying to enjoy these paints, my studio paints, as standalone paints. They're different. I, I don't expect them to be the same, but I wanted to see if they were nice. Does that make sense? Um... I think I want to do like a Viridian comparison. So that would be an emerald green is what they call that. Um, and see what kind of green mixes I can get. Oh, I love Viridian. It's pretty. It's soft. That's a pretty Viridian. I really like that. That's that's a soft, non-intense. Like yes, when you put it when I put it down like that, but when it's when it's thinned out, I think Viridian is such a nice color, and I really like that ochre mix right there. All right, so let's try Viridian over here, Emerald. Just a touch because you know that's going to be intense, and it was. I'm glad that I I pulled a little bit out. So you can see I'm just barely touching the emerald green from uh, the professional set and it's giving me a lot of pigment. And so ooh, that ochre mix is so pretty. But in a way, that's a beautiful property about this one, right? So if I want to do a painting, it's light fast. I don't have to worry about it and I don't have to worry about its intensity. So I think if you look at this, at the Rosa, you know, at the student watercolors as it, you know, an independent product rather than like using them and comparing them and thinking of a comparison while you're using them, if you're just present with them, <laughs> I think you will really enjoy them. At least I have been. All right, um, I'm going to give this a quick shot with my heat gun and then I'll get, be able to paint some more. Okay, so let's go next door and let this square. So I took some extra time with my heat gun trying to really dry my paper um, so that if I do bleed over with water, the paint will layer rather than bleed into the next square and cause like a cauliflower. So that's a little little paint tip there. Um, okay, I'm wet. And now we gotta pick a color, any color. Um, let's do there's not really um, like a magenta in this one. 
but oh, we could do, we could do a uh, violet light and Quinn violet. So not identical, but we could try and see what happens. Ooh. All right. So this is Quinn violet. That's intense. And this would be violet light. This, so there's a violet light and a violet deep, but I think the violet deep is more like um, the, the violet regular over there. But they're calling that Quinn Violet, and this is um, Violet Light in the Rosa Gallery. So totally a um, much different pigment load there, you can see. And much pinker, though. See, I, 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 don't, I don't mind this. I, that is to me is a different color and it is they're not calling it the same this is Quinn violet and that's that's violet light but this is exactly why I wanted the um the studio set because this violet light it's got a light fast rating of two on a scale of one to three so it's it's fairly light fast right so I can I, why shouldn't I be able to use that in my sketchbook in my work like, I'm super happy with that. I like that a lot. Um, this one is drying, though. Uh, this square is drying faster than that one over there. So I want to put something on the outset there. Perhaps maybe a yellow. Um, maybe a, a yellow deep. So uh, we, this would be Cad Yellow Deep. Oh, wrong, wrong palette. Well, we do yellow medium. So this would be a yellow medium over here. I don't really have a yellow deep in this set. So we'll go yellow medium on the outset. Here. Ooh, that's very pretty. That's a very pretty yellow medium. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm happy with this set. I am happy with my student set. This is a light fast rating of three. I am not sad about that. That's a gorgeous yellow. That's PY74 uh, and PY83. It's a mixture. So we'll go over here for the um, medium, which would be cadmium yellow light, would be our medium yellow in the botanical professional set. Again, intense, intense and pretty. You're, ooh, though, that, I mean, it's, it's just a different, it's just a different yellow to me. Do you know? I think. I think it's just different. All right. Now, oh, so pretty though. <laughs> I, I love paint. I love watercolor. If you do too, give me a thumbs up down below. All right. So um, to mix with that then, I want to now... I was just, I, I had something in mind. Um, oh, I was going to do a green of some sort. Um, wow, those are really similar when they're dried down, aren't they? Dang, those are really similar when they're dried down. All right. <clears throat> so um, would I say, oh, a green? Yeah, let's do this, this bright green here. Green light, we're calling this. They're calling this. Let's do green light. I want to mix that with the, the violet light. See where that goes, All right? Oh, I like it. And then we've got bright green over here. You can see I've used that a lot. It's a nice mixing green. Let's see how it mixes here. A little bit differently. Let's see how it mixes with the Quinn Violet. Ooh, I like that. Very pretty. All right. Ooh, that's a nice neutral. That's a nice neutral that's coming out there. You see that? These are coming. These are, these are, I'm happy with how these are coming along. Let me put it that way. All right. So now we'll do the lower right. Moving right along getting excited and happy here Got myself a little too wet <laughs> yeah i said it and yeah it happened so okay here we go and no it's not made for kids 
All right. Now we have our lower left wet and um, think about what we want to do in the middle here. So I guess orange would be next. You know, we haven't, we haven't picked an, on an orange. So we've got orange here and we have cat orange here. So we'll go cat orange and plop some cat orange down in the center. Looks like tang, you know how I like the tang. If you, <laughs> maybe you do. I like the tang. Maybe you don't. I like the tang. I like the tang. I like to, I like things that look like tang and I like paint that looks like tang. <laughs> so that is compared to orange, which is PO13. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I'm so happy with that. Now this only has a light fast rating of one. I know I've mentioned uh, before, I don't put a whole lot of stock into Lightfast, and I here's why. All right, lots of things contribute to whether something is Lightfast, where the painting is hung, what other chemicals, oils, whatever, um, are in your environment. Um, lots of things will affect the permanence or impermanence of your, your artwork. Um, if it's mixed media, if you use glue on it, I mean, there's, there's lots of things that are going to affect the integrity of your artwork. And I've mentioned before that to me, that just, you know, makes me enjoy it even more and appreciate it even more, um, for the time that I do have it, because everything here is, is temporary. Nothing is permanent. So enjoy it while it's here. Take good care of it while you have it. Appreciate it for what it is. And that way, if, if it does go away or when it does go away, right, you, you know, you appreciate it. I know I've appreciated it as much as humanly possible because I'm aware of its impermanence. So that's why I don't go to put too much stock in whether something's going to last as far as light fatness, fastness. And I know that's pretty philosophical approach to, you know, my paints, but Hey, you know, I think I'm not the only one out there that does that. And that's pretty intense. That's just as intense. Their violet deep PV3 is just as intense as the professional. I'm hardly having to touch it. And that's beautiful. That's beautiful. So yeah, great, 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 great little something to pick up, to play with, um, to take out and about on vacation, to give to your kids, to learn, to, yeah, for, for holiday cards, right? I just posted a, um, a holiday card video. And, you know, when I'm doing my holiday cards, I typically don't use my most expensive supplies when I'm making lots of them, right? Um, so for things like that, I love having more inexpensive, reliable supplies that I can use. And, you know, I'm not going to break out my Schmincke paints to do, to paint my, you know, a, a 18 holiday cards. I'm just not, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to break out something like that. Um, so anyway, but that's just me. I digress. Um, I'm just trying to think about what to place in between these two. And I kind of want to place like a red down there for some reason. Um, Maybe do, I think, I think, I want to think that Carmine over here is more on the pink side and more like of, um, I think Matter Rose, I think would be a good comparison. It would be, I think. So this is Carmine and this was one that I really wanted. It's PR 57 colon one and one I don't have and one I wanted to have, um, and, and so, <laughs> yeah, it was one of the reasons why I really wanted this set because I don't have that. And look at that mix is gorge. So, um, and I want to see what that looks like with the orange that flows so beautifully. Oh, 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 I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. So let's see what we can get over here now. I, I need to hurry. I'm going to give it a little bit more, um, a little bit more purple. 
let's be fair. Let's give it a little, there we go. There we go. There we go, Violet. Okay. And the comparable pink over here would be Matter Rose. And um, let's see. All right. I think that's very comparable and very pretty. Oh, that's lovely. See, that does make a nice mix together. That's pretty and vibrant. And similar, surprisingly similar in intensity, I think. And with the orange, I think that's really pretty. I love, I love Matter Rose in Rosa Gallery. I think it's such a pretty pink. It's, it's like not as um, red as, or not as blue as like a magenta, um, but not as like fluorescent pink as an opera rose. So I'm, I'm super happy with that. And also the carmine here is a light fast rating of two out of three. Oh. So yeah, I think, yeah, beautiful, beautiful colors, right? Wow, that's so intense. That's so intense. That is a pretty combination. So this was cadmium orange, uh, matter red, and violet out of Rosa Gallery watercolors. That's so pretty. I love that combination. Oh, I'm so happy. This is this is a great way to get to know all your supplies. Um, when I'm done here, I'm totally going to do mixed media on top of this. Uh, I don't know that I will film it all, um, but I will do mixed media on top of this. So let's see. Boy, I'm really loving these. I'm really loving these two. I can't wait to see how they look dried down. What a nice uh, discovery that was. All right, so maybe some neutrals? I don't know. Let's see. Um, but um bum. We haven't done a blue center. Haven't done a blue center. Oh, I know what I want to do. Turquoise. So I really want to compare the turquoise colors. Uh, so this is uh, turquoise on Rosa Gallery. Ooh. Oh. You know, that's going to, if I don't hold that down, that's going to be a problem. Okay. Oh, I just have to. That's really pretty. I love turquoise. All right, and here's this turquoise is PG7 and PB15-3. And it's identical. It is identical. So, not that the turquoise is like a really expensive pan. All right, so they're not, they're not identical. But they are very similar. These are very similar. Um, you know, and yet they're different still. Like, yes, they're similar, but look at how differently they behave. And if you want to get two different um, effects, I think, like, how cool would that be as a background? You know, if you wanted to get two different effects doing on, like, a background, and just wetting a background, and then dropping in blobs of each, and they would give two different, completely, two different effects. So I, I see like a lot of benefit to having, <laughs> you know, even um, two of the same color with different binders that are going to behave differently. Endless possibilities with this. I'm not, <laughs> not sad at all about having two, especially with the same pigments that, that behave differently. Like what a cool thing to have. Oh, I'm so happy I have this set. All right, so um, the outside maybe a red, yeah, 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 a red. All right, so um, this let's try red light versus um, bright red. All right, so this would be uh, red light PR two and PR four with a light fast rating of two out of three. So I think this is going to be like their their version of primary red as as primary red as primary reds go um
and then this would be bright red. They call their primary red in the professional. Oops, I just did that wrong, didn't I? Dang it. <laughs> Opposite, then that one's going to be opposite. Oops, 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 oops. All right, I fix it. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. Fine. One's going to be off. One's going to be off. Had to happen. But we'll find out. That could be a happy accident. Let's Bob Ross it and call this a happy accident because I really like the way those two are interacting together. It looks like a bomb pop to me. If I want to paint a bomb pop, I know what two colors that I'm going to use. And it's not going to be that one. Do you see? Happy accident. If I want to paint a bomb pop, although, I don't know. I have options. If I want to, moral is if I want to paint a bomb pop, I have options now. I have options. And options are a good thing. So what are we going to put in the, I have too many options. I got to figure out what I'm going to put in the middle here. Thinking, loading, loading, loading. I'm going to put umber in. I'm going to put the umber in and see what's going to happen. I love umber as a mixing color. Um, Lindsay, the frugal crafter, did a great video of, um, about mixing umber. And I, you know, if you've ever wondered, like, why the heck, what is umber for? Umber is a mixing color. And umber is a really cool mixing color. So, um, yeah, check out Lindsay Wyrick's video on umber and umber mixes uh, if you haven't and also don't really understand like what is umber doing in your palette um, <laughs> or what you can do with umber in your palette. Um, check out Lindsay's video. It's, it's really cool. And ever since then, I love, I love painting with umber in my palette. So we've got those and then uh, I got to dry this up and then we can do our last square. All right, last square going down. Now this, what are we gonna do with this last square? I wanna do orange on the outside. And um, so here, I don't know, those are all three orange though, aren't they? I still wanna do it. So orange on the outside. Oh, so brilliant and vibrant. Love it. And in the center, I want to do a blue. Um, all right, so this is blue. We'll do this blue. And there's also, we've got two blues. So this blue is PB15 one. So we're talking about, you know, a phthalo. But that's, that's different. That's pretty. That's a pretty, that's a pretty phthalo. And I want to start, and I just said, oh, I'm going to do the outside, huh? Let's do a yellow. Um, yellow light. That yellow is so vibrant. This yellow light in the um, Rosa Gallery set. It's so intense. And it didn't dry down at all. Like, it didn't fade at all during the dry down. Like, when you look at the, the cadmium yellow over here, it dried, it lightened a lot. I can't believe it almost disappeared there in the corner. Um... All right, so this is a cadmium orange that I'm going to put on the outside here. Again, it's um, a little bit less intense than uh, the orange over in this, the studio. 
but I also am feeling like these are at least I think I feel like I I'm gonna I'm gonna treat them as as different paints I know that I mean today I'm doing the comparison but generally speaking um yeah so here we've got this blue See, that looks much more like a, a phthalo to me than the other one. Um, I, I, I think that blue's prettier. I think this this the gallery blue is a prettier straight up blue. It doesn't look as, um, it's not as unnatural. I don't know. I, I don't know. It just, yeah, it looks, um, yeah, more bright. Anyway, so uh, we've got then the cadmium yellow light mix into here. That is a pretty mix if it um, keeps its intensity. I'm really surprised at how much the intensity of the the cadmium lemon faded. You know, and it's like I wouldn't notice that unless I was holding it right up against something and doing a study like that. All right, so here we are. I'm going to dry these two. All right, so here we are. I'm going to dry these two, and then we'll have a closer look. So as I'm drying, I did want to mention before I go into the critique that the price of these watercolors vary greatly. The studio set runs about $15 to $17 and the botanical set runs about $60. So keep that in mind when we're looking at the final results. Right, so okay kids. Here we have it. Let me know down below what you think. We have the Rosa Professional, Rosa Gallery on the left, Rosa Studio on the right. Um, side by side, what do you think? What do you think? I'm surprised. I, I was surprised by a lot of things. Um, <laughs> I was surprised by how the paints behaved um, and when I laid them down. I was surprised about how the paints dried down, uh, specifically the yellows. Um, I found the gallery to be more intense in a lot of cases as compared to the professional. Although I will say with the professional set, even though it did fade a lot, it fades down to kind of a smoother transition. I mean, I I'm surprised it at the drying difference between the two paints, especially considering how much more pigment was put down, you know, or at least appeared to be when I placed things down. Um, yeah, especially the green, you know, this, the, the green here, the um, green, these two greens, I mean, this was so intense when I laid it down initially and it faded to like nothing. And this has some dry, but I mean, it stayed a lot more intense than um, than the professional set did. So I don't know what to make of this all. I'm really glad that I have both. These This color combination is like my favorite and one I will continue to use. I like this range here is just delicious to me. Um, yeah. So I hope you found this video informative and relaxing and whatever. So if you did, please give me a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, everybody, take good care. Bye.